How's it going, guys? Today we're going to start on another guitar paint job. Uh, this one's on a Telecaster, which I tend to be, I seem to be doing a few of lately. Uh, and this one had actually kind of a failed relicking job on it uh, by the previous owner. So now the new owner has asked me to fix that up, and while I'm at it, I'm going to put his band logo on there. Uh, he's in a band called Atomic Alice, and so we're going to put about a 10 centimeter diameter. Yes, centimeter, I'm in Canada. 10 centimeter diameter logo right about here in a circle. And I think it's going to look pretty cool. And aside from that, all we're going to do is uh, put a new gloss finish on it. And I'll show you why right now. So the previous owner tried to relic this, as I mentioned. Did, did a, well, he didn't do a very good job. So he just kind of took a chunk out here. It looks like it's been dropped. Uh, here he managed to get through the finish. That doesn't look too, too bad. But then the rest of it, it looks like he just went over it with a scotch pad, kind of like you would to prepare for paint, uh, and scuffed off some, but not all of the gloss. Thing is, he didn't take the hardware off, and he didn't do the edges. So the edges are still glossy in most spots. Um, you can see, hopefully there, that he didn't take the pick guard or the bridge off to do it. So they're very glossy underneath, and then the rest has been kind of scuffed back a bit. So really, uh, not, not stellar. Doesn't look relict. Looks more like it was gone over with a scotch pad, hopefully by accident. Anyway, let's go through the process real quick. So I'm going to start by taking a scotch pad to this thing properly. I'm going to be very thorough and make sure I get all the surfaces. And I'm going to be very careful in around those areas where he's got it down uh, beyond the original paint where you can see wood. Because uh, I want to make sure that that's all sanded properly and that the new clear coat is going to seal everything together. Once I've got it all scuffed up, I'm going to clean it. Then I'm going to apply my mask and spray the logo on there. Now, because this already has a polyurethane coating on it and that's what I'm refinishing it with, I'm not going to need to use any primer or anything. It's going to be very simple. I'm just going to spray out this logo uh, in reverse, actually, is what we've decided to go with. So the logo will be left clear-ish, and uh, the background will be black. And then once that's had time to dry, it'll be time to go over it with a new coat of catalyzed poly so that I can polish it. So when we're done, it's going to look very similar to what it looks like now, except with a nice uniform gloss and the logo on there. So I'm going to get started with the scuffing now. I, there's really, I'm not, I'm not going to bother showing you that. I just want you to know that that's what's happening. So I'm taking this and I'm just going to go over the whole guitar, moderate pressure, and make sure that I've got all of that gloss off there and that it's ready for its new coat of paint. Okay, so now I've scuffed this thing all down uh, with gray, scotch braid essentially, so that it doesn't have any gloss left on it. And it's time to apply my mask for the airbrushing. So I have here a custom cut vinyl mask. It's, uh, it's done on low tech, or sorry, low tack vinyl made by AuraJet. And I'm gonna be applying it right in this area using transfer tape. So when you go to apply a mask, let me show you this. It's, it's on vinyl that was printed before, but it doesn't really matter. I've, pulled out all of these sections, those are the ones being painted, and all I've got left is the mask that I actually want. So I'm going to apply transfer tape over top of this, and then peel it back and take this vinyl with it, then I'm going to apply it onto the guitar, and peel off my transfer tape so that I can spray this. So the way that this is designed to work is this back surface is glossy, so things don't stick to it very well. So this stuff isn't stuck on there very hard. So the transfer tape will stick onto this harder than this is stuck to the backing, thus peeling it off. But the vinyl is stronger than the transfer tape. The transfer tape adhesive is very weak. So when I stick the vinyl onto the guitar, it's going to stick on there harder than the transfer tape is stuck to the vinyl, and I'll be able to peel it off. There is a technique to it. I've demoed it in a different video, but I'm going to show you again um, because, hey, why not? So let's move over to the table, and we'll take a look at how to do this. All right, here we go. Yes, the table is dirty, but it's, it's smooth still. It's been actually cleaned. It's not so much dirty as it is just painted, so 
don't worry about that. Anyway, I got my transfer tape here. Uh, sometimes it's referred to as frisket. Stuff is available in fairly large rolls generally, but be aware that after a while, it does kind of expire. It's got a shelf life. And when it does that, it starts to get old. You can actually see this is kind of an old roll. It looks uh, kind of aged and messy around the outside. And then it'll tear off in chunks and it won't really work properly. So it's not, it's still suitable under those circumstances. I have newer rolls than this. Um, it's still quite suitable for applying graphics like this. But when you are going to be applying the mask as the graphic, which a lot of you will be because you won't have vinyl pl plotters, when you're going to be applying your mask and then uh, drawing your graphics on and cutting them out of that, you're going to want newer stuff hopefully. So be aware of that when you're buying transfer tape. Don't buy a gigantic roll if you're not going to be able to actually use it. It's kind of a waste. Anyway, so I apply this on here now. There's a uh, a more stringent technique, if you will. I guess a more technical way of doing it for larger applications, but for just this small one, this is going to work just fine. And I'm going to push that down on there really good to make sure that I'm, I'm sticking to that vinyl nice and hard, and hopefully harder than it's sticking to the backing. So now I'm going to throw a clean cloth down here. It's got a little bit of color to it because it's been stained a couple times but it's been washed so again don't worry about that put the guitar down on here make sure we've got this thing oriented properly it's gonna go like that check out where the end of it is once I got it, get it peeled so now I'm just gonna peel off the backing um, hopefully I'm gonna do that today come on Come on, there it is. All right, so take your backing, and if you peel it away, kind of like this at a strong angle, it's less likely to lift your vinyl with it. And there we go. That's exactly what we wanted. All right, now it's time to get this applied. I'm gonna just make sure I've got it straight up and down here. I can kind of see through my transfer tape, so I'll be able to determine where my edge is, my top edge, and I'm going to go just below that a little bit. I can also feel it. So right in there is where we want this. I'm just going to burnish that down with my hands so that it sticks on there nicely. All right. And then the same technique as before applies. If you want this to peel off nicely and not take as much stuff with it, you peel it away right along the surface like that. And there we go. So that, that is gonna work nicely. That's basically ready to spray. I'm just gonna put a couple layers of masking tape around it so that I don't have to worry about uh, getting overspray there, and I'm going to use an airbrush so that I can target this very uh, precisely and again not have to worry about masking the whole thing. If I were worried about that, I could cover the entire surface in transfer tape, cut this out, and then peel that section off and spray that.